this is the year we are finally here September 15 of this year represents the date that we will have implementation of some TSP changes uh, so I, I'm not here today to go through every line of the act uh, I'm here to hit the practical points that we see affect individual federal employees and bring that to your attention and to your light so uh, that makes sure you understand the scope of this first what is it today and then what will it be after September 15th? And I want to look at two time frames in relation to this. One, while you're in service, and second, while you're retired. So what you need to know before you withdraw from your TSP, while you're in service, and then while you're retired. While you're in service, you're still working um, for the federal government. You can take a loan, we already talked about that. You can take a hardship withdrawal, uh, which again has some consequences, some taxes, in some uh, lack of contribution uh, in the future or you can take an age-based withdrawal now take my note here my little red line uh, if you want to write down something from this it's a good statement uh, you, you must be 70 uh, excuse me 59 you must be 59 and a half or older to make an age-based withdrawal so if you are still working for the federal government you're 60 years old you can one time right now one time you can come to the TSP and say uh, send me some money. You can take possession of it. You can roll it to an IRA or Roth IRA. You can do whatever you'd like with that money. You can do that one time uh, while you are still employed currently. That's something that's about to change. Um, in retirement currently, you, you can leave the money in the TSP. Again, there'll be required minimum distributions by April 1st of the year you're following. You turn age 70 and a half. I referenced 70 and a half earlier, that that's when your RMDs, your required minimum distributions, kick in. Uh, and so you, you have to do that. That's not changing. That's the law. You have to start taking money out. Um, or in retirement, you can take a partial withdrawal, right? One time you can come uh, to the TSP and take that, uh, take that distribution. Currently, you can do that one time. It's coming with the TSP Modernization Act that you can do that partial withdrawal uh, one every 30 days if you wanted to and you can satisfy your required minimum distribution with that form. Um, you can also, in, which, in retirement, use the full withdrawal form. That full withdrawal, you can have a combination of four different things going on on this form. Uh, you can take a single payment, you know, send me $10,000 on one big party, I'm retiring, let's have a good time. Uh, you can get that. Um, you can do monthly payments. Right now, you can only change those monthly payments once a year. There's going to be some more freedoms on that. Hang on. Or you can transfer your money from TSP to an IRA, Roth IRA, or, or somewhere else if you'd like. Or you can trade in your lump sum for an income stream. That's called a life annuity. You can go to MetLife. Basically, TSP goes to MetLife. And you can say, uh, no longer do I want the, um, the, uh, the lump sum of my $300,000. I want to give you that, and I'll take $1,500 a month the rest of my life. Uh, I will pause to say I don't find that to be beneficial for a lot of federal retirees uh, simply because you already have steady income coming in from several sources. More commonly, we see individuals uh, have that lump sum available and they use it as they need it. They hit it for a car or for a grandchild's education or trip or maybe a little bit of more monthly income for a little while and then cut it back and, and they tend to do bits and pieces with that money as opposed to a life annuity where you now have another check that, that will most likely never change and is only good for your life or yours and your wife's or your spouse's life depending on the choice you make. So that life annuity is a bit careful, be, a bit, uh, be careful with that. It can be a catch uh, that you don't like. So these are your current options. Um, the TSP Modernization Act is going to give us unlimited in-service withdrawals. So after September 15, if you are over 59 and a half, uh, you can have more than one age-based withdrawal, meaning you can go to the TSP. Let's say you have 300000 in your TSP. You say, I want to move 200000 to an IRA. You can do that and still have 100 in the TSP. You can come back the next year and say, I want $20,000 for an expense that I need. You can go get that money. Oh, the government shut down and I'm, I don't have a paycheck. I don't want to borrow from the TSP maybe for some reason. I'll just take $10,000 from my TSP. Uh, to have to live on. You can do that. So there'll be unlimited in-service withdrawals while, in-service meaning while you're still working, 
that will be available. That's a change from what we've had. We've had one that you could do uh, right now. After September, you can have unlimited. Um, and then again, unlimited post-separation withdrawal. So you'll be able to come to uh, the TSP after you retire and request a, a money at one point and then at another point and another point, as long as there's uh, some time lag between them, 30 days uh, between those withdrawals. Um, the T also on the TSP Modernization Act, you're no longer to require to make a full a TSP full withdrawal. That's a particular form that you have to had to use uh, after 70 and a half and separated to get your uh, required minimum distributions. You don't have to use the full form. You can actually do it with partial withdrawals. Uh, that's good. That that allows you more flexibility uh, in that withdrawal uh, opportunity options. Um, you also have the ability to choose on your full withdrawal when you're getting money in retirement every month you don't have to just get it monthly you can choose to get it quarterly or annually and you can stop or start or change the payments at any time so right now you can only change those payments every uh december basically for the next january the next year now if you start a monthly check from tsp they will allow you to make adjustments to that throughout the year and if you don't like monthly you got a quarterly bill that you want to pay with tsp you can get it out uh quarterly on that front as well um uh, lastly you can choose whether your withdrawals come from your Roth, your traditional, or both accounts. Uh, this one is pretty big, especially for any special provisions that are online. Uh, while we uh, talk a lot about using the Roth TSP as a great savings people for in, that, in your 40s and even in your early 50s, uh, for a lot of special provisions or people that are planning to retire younger, it was a little difficult because until now, uh, whenever you took money out of the TSP, it would come out pro rata. Uh, pro rata means you didn't get to control if it was Roth or traditional. You would have to take a percentage of both buckets for every dollar you took out of the account. We used to call it the coffee and the creamer mix. Uh, once you have coffee and you put creamer in it, every sip you take is going to have both elements, right? It's going to have coffee and creamer. You can't separate the two. And, and so that was the case. So special provisions that might be retiring early and might want access to their TSP or even people retiring before 59 and a half. Uh, to load up on Roth TSP meant you weren't going to have control on the distribution side, and that was going to mess that up. Now they're going to give that to you. So if you have been hesitant about Roth TSP because you just weren't sure that you were going to be able to withdraw it when you wanted to, how you wanted to, that is a TSP uh, opening that I think, I, it, to me, that's probably the best one to relieve that pressure of being under 59 and a half and not being able to control your withdrawal. So that gives you that uh, that freedom, that withdrawal freedom. Um, does this, what does this do for the TSP? It, it allows just some more flexibility on how you can access money. That's the biggest takeaway from the TSP Modernization Act. How you access your money has improved over what it was. Um, it doesn't change certain other functions. Remember there's five lettered funds, the GFC, S&I, or the L funds that are a combination of those funds that you get to choose to invest in. Um, there's nothing in the act that talks about providing any kind of actual um, investment planning or financial planning services. Uh, it appears they're still going to be able to keep the cost uh, quite low. We'll see if they can keep it as low as it is right now by offering this more options. There'll be more service work for them to do and they may have to raise the cost. That's me speaking. They haven't said that uh, and that I have read yet. But uh, so you are getting more accessibility to the funds, not more planning or more investment options through this act. So some pluses, uh, still there are still reasons when you look at this, if you need more investment or financial planning options, then you should consider other financial planners. Always be careful, right? Your TSP is a very low cost. If you deal with financial planners in this matter, the cost will be higher. Will you get more benefit than the cost? That's the question you have to ask and articulate uh, and even crunch the numbers on on what that would be.